with many voices. Item number, SCP-939. Object class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-939-1-3-19-53-1. Dash 89, dash 96, dash 98, dash 99, and dash 109 are kept in cell 1163-A or 1163-B, 10 meters by 10 meters by 3 meters containment chambers with an armed biocontainment area 14. Both cells are environmentally regulated and negatively pressurized, with walls constructed of reinforced concrete. Access to these cells is regulated by an outer decontamination chamber and inner gas-tight steel security doors. Observation windows are constructed of laminated ballistics glass 10 centimeters in thickness protected by a 100 kilovolts electrified mesh. Humidity is maintained at 100% at a temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. Specimens are monitored at all times via infrared cameras. Level 4 authorization is required to access SCP-939, their containment areas, or the observation chambers. SCP-939-101 is dismembered and stored in cryogenic preservation tanks 939-101A to 939-101M within Bioresearch Area 12. Access to SCP-939-101 requires authorization by two Clearance Level 3 personnel, one of which must be present for all research and testing. The contents of only one 939-101 tank may be accessed at any given time. Core temperature of SCP-939-101 tissues must be monitored while removed from cryogenic preservation. Should core temperature exceed 10 degrees Celsius, tissues are to be returned to their corresponding tank and all testing suspended for a period of 72 hours. Barring core temperature exceeding 10 degrees Celsius, research of SCP-939-101 tissues may continue as long as its ramblings and pleas for release may be tolerated. Containment cells should be cleaned bi-weekly. While this takes place, SCP-939 specimens will be transferred to the adjacent cell. During this time, the cell's door and observation window must be inspected for damage and repaired or replaced accordingly. Heavy sedation of all SCP-939 is required before any interaction, including transfer between cells and experimentation, may take place. See document number 939-TE4 for transfer and experimentation protocol. Level C hazmat gear is to be worn by personnel during interactions with SCP-939 specimens and in any areas which SCP-939 have been known to inhabit. Afterward, standard decontamination procedures are to be observed by all personnel involved to ensure no secondary spread of amnestic agents occurs. Following incident ABCA 14-939-3, all non-Class D personnel interacting with SCP-939 for any length of time are required to wear two waterproof electronic pulse monitors for the duration of such interaction. These pulse monitors will transmit to a wireless monitoring system independent of a facility's main power grid, with at least one backup power system on standby. Should both an individual's pulse monitors flatline or otherwise malfunction, the wearer will be presumed dead personnel instructed to disregard all the wearer's subsequent vocalizations, and a breach of containment declared automatically. Security personnel responding to such a breach are likewise required to wear these pulse monitors. Additionally, all live SCP-939 must be implanted with subdermal tracking devices upon capture. Description: SCP-939 are endothermic, pack-based predators which display atrophy of various systems similar to troglobitic organisms. The skins of SCP-939 are highly permeable to moisture and translucent red, owing to a compound chemically similar to hemoglobin. SCP-939 average 2.2 meters tall standing upright and weigh an average of 250 kilograms, though weight is highly variable. Each of their four limbs end in three fingered claws with a fourth, opposable digit, and are covered in setae which considerably augment climbing ability. Their heads are elongated, devoid of even vestigial eyes or eye sockets and contain no brain casing. The jaws of SCP-939 are lined with red, faintly luminescent fang-like teeth, similar to those belonging to specimens of the genus Calliotis, up to 6 centimeters in length, and encircled by heat-sensitive pit organs. Eye spots, sensitive to light and dark, run the length of their spined dorsal ridges. These spines may be up to 16 centimeters long, and are believed to be sensitive to changes in air pressure and flow. SCP-939 do not possess many vital organ systems. Central and peripheral nervous systems, circulatory system, and digestive tract are all absent. SCP-939's respiratory system is atrophied and serves no apparent purpose beyond spreading AMN-C227. See below. 
SCP-939 have no apparent physiological need to feed, nor any way to digest consumed tissue. Ingested material typically accumulates in the respiratory system of SCP-939 and is regurgitated once the amount is sufficient to markedly inhibit its function. Despite the absence of many vital organ systems, SCP-939 are capable of bearing live young. See Addendum October 16, 1991. SCP-939's primary method of luring prey is the imitation of human speech in the voices of prior victims, though imitation of other species and active nocturnal hunts have been documented. SCP-939 vocalizations often imply significant distress. Whether SCP-939 understand their vocalizations or are repeating previously heard phrases is a subject of ongoing study. How SCP-939 acquire voices is not currently understood. Specimens have been documented imitating victims despite never hearing the victim speak. Analysis of SCP-939 vocalizations cannot distinguish between SCP-939 and samples of known victims' voices. The use of biometric voice recognition security or identification systems at any installation housing SCP-939 is strongly discouraged for this reason. Prey is usually killed with a single bite to the cranium or neck. Bite forces have been measured in excess of 35 MPA. SCP-939 exhale minute traces of an aerosolized Class C amnestic, designated AMN-C227. AMN-C227 causes temporary and grade amnesia, inhibiting memory formation for the duration of exposure, plus an average of 30 minutes. It is colorless and tasteless, with an estimated ECT-50 for inhalation of 0.001 mg times minute per cubic meter. In well-ventilated or open-air environments, risk of exposure to ECT-50 is greatly reduced but not negligible. AMN-C227 is typically undetectable in the bloodstream 60 minutes following cessation of exposure. Reported sensations of disorientation and mild hallucinations immediately following removal from environments saturated with the agent are similar to recreational use of numerous psychoactive substances and easily mistaken as such. Note March 23, 2005. This report pertains to Morphology Alpha. For information regarding Morphology Beta, see Redacted. Experiment Log 914, AMTF News 7 After Action Report, blank, Redacted. Addendum November 14, 1981. A log of radio traffic between capture teams during initial contact with SCP-939 is available here. Addendum April 11, 1982. See Addendum September 20, 1991. Due to SCP-939's intense aversion to bright light, it has been deemed a minimal risk of escape. Standard fluorescent hallway lighting is sufficient to deter SCP-939-1 from leaving its darkened cell. Addendum June 29, 1987. Preliminary research into AMN-C227 suggests potential for use as a general-purpose amnestic. Methods of mass-producing the agent, as well as possible adverse effects, are being investigated at Biocontainment and Research Site 6. Addendum October 3, 1990. AMN-C227 has been approved for use as a Class C amnestic. Projected annual production at Bioresearch Area 12 by SCP-939 respiratory tissue cultures is expected to surpass 3 liters. Addendum September 20, 1991. Containment of 9 SCP-939 specimens has been compromised following a Silent Night breach scenario at Biocontainment and Research Site 6. Nearby civilian settlements have been evacuated on the pretense of a coming storm. Recovery teams have been deployed to the area. Addendum October 16, 1991. Redacted. In light of this, all interaction with SCP-939 from September 8th to October 7th in the Northern Hemisphere, or March 6th to April 4th in the Southern Hemisphere is strictly forbidden. Redacted. No male specimens of SCP-939 have yet been identified. Redacted contain a Class B amnestic. Redacted. See Reproduction of SCP-939. Addendum February 20th, 1992. Effective immediately, use of AMN-C227 as an amnestic is suspended indefinitely. Consult Incident Report AMN-C227-939 for further information.